How's it going guys? Samson here again from Ross IELTS Academy. Now as many of you are struggling to get a high score in your IELTS speaking, I'm here today to do some practice in part one of speaking about hometown. Oh, I see many of you have faced this topic in part one. Of course you have. That is one of the most common ones in this section. So what I want to do is to show you what possible questions you might be asked on this topic and how easily you can get seven and above in speaking just by giving some short but clear answers. Who says you need to be an instructor or a native to do that? You should just learn the strategies. That's what I'm here for. But before we get started, please subscribe to our channel because there are so many other free and useful material on the way and you may want to use them to boost your score in a short amount of time. Now, I want to thank you for your lovely comments, all of you on our YouTube channel. Every day, you know, we're receiving tons of messages and comments from you, which mean everything to us. Yes. Very well. Now I will zoom in on some of the questions you might be asked about hometown and show you how easily you can answer them. Once again, you should not explain a lot in part one. You should give a two to three sentences answer because this part is no longer than five minutes. Even if you give long answers, the examiner will stop you to ask you the next question. Now, I want to give you the answer to some questions, but make sure to watch this video to the very end, guys. So, here's how it works. We will be playing a game. How fun. There will be two candidates and an examiner, but it will be a lot of exhilarating fun and useful at the same time. It's interesting preparing for IELTS through games, don't you think? Guess what? Since Ross IELTS Academy is traveling the world and we offer online services, you can also take part in this game. All you need to do is contact us here in the comments or on our website. How's it going everyone? We are playing the speaking combo, IELTS speaking part one. So here's how this game works. We have two candidates and one examiner. The candidates are Samson and Mehnaz and I'm here, Mehnu Shafi from Ross IELTS Academy. I will be asking them the same questions and today's topic is hometown. And since the questions are the same for both candidates, the one who presses the buzzer first can go first. And after that, I'll be giving them feedback based on the four criteria, fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. So stay with us. How are you guys? Not too bad. A bit I'm, tired today. Yeah, we're good. But you look nervous. Just a little bit. Maybe, maybe <laughs> yeah. she is. Oh, I am, I'm honest. <laughs> Great. Not great, but okay. So we can get started with the first question. As you know, the topic is hometown and I'll be asking you four questions today. And once you press the buzzer, you can go, okay? Sure. sure. Good. So here's the first question. Where is your hometown? Samson? My hometown is situated, I think, around 70 miles outside of the British capital, London. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite convenient because you can get into central London by train in just 30 to 35 minutes and it's all right. It's not too bad. Mehnaz? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I live in Tehran, which is the capital city of my country. It's really crowded and it's full of air and noise pollution, but I love it here, although the hectic pace of life makes me tired sometimes. Thank you very much. Good. Let's go with the second question. Do you like your hometown? Mehnaz? Oh, well, absolutely. I love my hometown, but uh, I sometimes uh, really want to go to the countryside or uh, see a new scenery because sometimes as i said the pollution the crowded mm -hmm. parts everything just makes me tired but it's really great and functional here thank you samson to be honest with you i used to like my hometown a lot more probably because it's uh, overpopulated now and there's lots of traffic and it's become more of a fast life sort of uh, city life 
I'm not too much interested in that kind of lifestyle. I prefer to go into something a little bit more mellow. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Now the third question. Do you often visit your hometown? Samson. I have to say that I haven't visited my hometown in quite a while because mm -hmm. I've been living abroad for several years and I do miss my family, but I'm always looking forward to my next trip on returning home. Perfect. Menos. Well, since I live in my hometown right now, I visit it every day, but um, I, at least I try to find some new places, like um, places to walk, places to hang out with my friends, which can be fun, but it's just... Okay. The same. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And the last question, what is your hometown like? Samson? That's an interesting question. What is my hometown all about? Mm -hmm. Well, it's very multicultural. It used to be not so multicultural. It used to be a lot more uh, emptier, empty. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, I guess it's sort of uh, the kind of place where you can study a lot, and you can progress as long as you're in your youth, but I wouldn't recommend staying there while you're getting older. Thank you so much, Mehnaz. Uh, well, my city and my hometown, as I said, it's the capital city and uh, it's the um, center of um, many cultural uh, events mm -hmm. here. Um, it's the first uh, stop for many tourists visiting uh, my country too. It's so crowded, it's got many beautiful uh, rising uh, buildings, uh, parks, and uh, great shopping malls. Okay, thank you very much. Great, great job. At least we're done. <laughs> That's we're done. enough. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so as you just saw, uh, these two candidates did a very, very great job. Both of them, they had a very wide range of vocabulary. They were both confident. They didn't run out of ideas, and that's a very important thing. But if I want to start with Samson, who pressed the buzzer uh, as the first candidate several times, um, I can say that, first of all, I loved how he paraphrased the questions. It was really good. Like, for example, um, Instead of saying, I like it, he said, I do love it, I'm interested in it. And uh, so many other paraphrase form of the words and phrases. That's a very good thing. And it's important in the lexical resource uh, criteria. Other than that, I loved his pace. Like he didn't speak very fast. And that's something that you should pay attention to. Not too fast, not too slow. And uh, once he kind of ran out of ideas, or maybe he was thinking about the next sentence, he just uh, changed his pace. He, a bit, he spoke a bit slower and then he came back to his normal pace. And that's kind of extending your answer so that you cover your ideas. That's a very good thing. Um, there was a very good use of tenses, like he, were, he was using uh, simple present, simple past, used to. That's a very good thing. And some boosters and discourse markers in the middle of the sentence. So guys, you shouldn't start each and every sentence with a discourse marker or a connective. So you can use them in the middle of your sentence. Like as Samson said something, blah, blah, I think, and then he went on. That's a very good thing. Now to talk about Mehnaz, um, I loved her vocabulary because he was she was actually trying to use a range of collocations and vocabulary related to the topic uh, I would say she could do better but it was it was sufficient like I could hear air pollution noise pollution hectic pace of life and these are some good things however she said rising buildings maybe she wanted to use some other word it was not a correct collocation but that's fine and uh, other than that, uh, she, she used uh, some words like although, since, so these are some alternatives, uh, some alternative connectives or, dis uh, connectives or conjunctions, and that's a very good thing. There was just one pronunciation problem, events, that's events, events. Um, and finally, there were some hesitations, but I would say no problem with that because she normally I, I could totally understand that this is how she speaks maybe in her mother tongue or even other languages these hesitations are natural because she was she was not actually thinking about what word or structure she wanted to use it was all about ideas and uh, 
that's okay. You will not be marked down if you have this kind of hesitation. Hesitation. However, you should just reduce your hesitation, self-correction or self-repetition if you want to get a very good score in fluency and coherence. Okay, guys, what do you think of your performance today? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I think this time it was kind of hard for me to um, talk about everything mm -hmm. in a short time and in, I don't know, maybe three or four sentences. That was the challenge for me today. Yeah, so you think uh, hometown was a challenging topic? Yeah, I had so many things to talk about. And for mm -hmm. part one, it was just... Too much, huh? Yeah, too you much. You know how to use all exactly. the words and ideas. <laughs> okay, but the information you gave me was enough. It was sufficient. Thank I was you. so worried about that. It's okay. Samson. I actually feel very much the same way Mehnaz does. I thought it was, it was, there's so many ideas in our head if we want to talk about our hometown. You just don't know where to begin and when to begin the next idea, which is mm -hmm. why I thought if I slow down a little bit, maybe the ideas will, will come and... Thanks for your feedback on that. You're welcome. You did a Thank great job today. Oh, so great. Yeah, I admit <laughs> it was great. So Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys, for your time and for watching this video. I can say that based on the feedback or based on what our candidates did uh, in the four criteria, I can say today Samson's performance was better than Mehna's because of all the things that I just mentioned. Thank you again and we'll see you very soon. Ooh, what a game. I feel warmed up. How about you? So, this is how you can answer such questions. IELTS speaking isn't hard. You just need to familiarize yourself with the topics which are more likely to be on the test day. And if you face an unfamiliar one, no need to worry. You can apply some techniques to manage the question and make yourself proud and prepared. Guess what? In our speaking courses and mock tests of speaking, we will teach you all these strategies and give you feedback on what you do and show you the way to improve it very easily. To enroll in them, you can visit our website. That's www.rossielts.com. In the next video, we will work on another common topic in part one, and that is family. Don't miss the next video, guys. I'm Samson Sees. Sees you in the next game.